You know, it's a big world out there, filled with people of all shapes and sizes, trying to get through each day. We are different in so many ways, physically and emotionally, each with our own personal story, our own history. Yet despite all our differences at the end of the day, we are all just people. We just come in different packages. My name is Kevin Kistler. I am 52 years old and I am a little person. Yeah, we prefer to be called little people. After all, that's what we are, little people. Just like you, only a little smaller. To call a little person a dwarf, that's okay too. Midget? No, we'll talk about that later. Personally, I like to be called by my name, Kevin. There are average sized people who believe that little people have limited intelligence. Not true, of course. What I do have is a condition common to many little people called achondroplasia. The bottom line is, little people, just like average sized people, have careers, get married, have children, and lead normal lives, just like you. I was born in Allentown, Pennsylvania. I met my wife, Connie, at the Little People of America National Conference in 1984. We were married in 1985, and we have two children. Emily is now 22 years old and goes to Georgian College in Barrie. She is average size. Scott was born four years later. And like Connie and myself, he is a little person. Connie is originally from Thornton, but I think she decided at some point in her young life she might have to go elsewhere to find a mate, which of course was me. I think once I got into the 20s and I started to get more active in Little People of Ontario, then you started to see it more that, you know, the attraction was there, there was little people, men. And then when I heard about the little people of America, I, I flew down to one of the conventions in Reno, Nevada. And then there was like a smorgasbord <laughs> of men, okay? So. <laughs> After four years of marriage, Connie and I decided to start a family. And we were prepared for the possibilities of having a little person, an average sized child, or in the worst case, a child that would not survive. We knew it, they could be small or tall, but we knew our lives were fine. Average size scared me a little bit. It actually did. Because I always feared, even with Emily, that at four or five years old, she wouldn't accept us. I don't know why I had that. She just wouldn't say, I don't want to be, you're not my parents, you're too small. You know, like those kind of questions. It never happened, but those were, was my biggest fear. Look at the tan you're already getting. I know. I was so burned that trip. <laughs> if I had average sized parents, it would be odd for me. Um, I'm just so used to having little people parents, so if I could switch my life to have an average size family, I think I probably would decline because I love my family, I do. I really enjoy this atmosphere, even though sometimes it can be a challenge, you know, but um, would I change my life? Definitely not. I did lose a child two years after Emily. I went f almost full term, 37 weeks. Um, this child took both of our dwarfism genes. Um, so it was, um, it was the dominant, the dwarfism was the dominant and that is when the chest size doesn't grow to capacity and when the child takes the, the first breath, it does, there's no room for it. Um, they can be either stillborn or they can be a day old, a couple weeks, but it's normally fatal. The bottom line was, we did not let the fear of the unknown stop us from having a family. I first realized when I was shorter than everyone else was probably in kindergarten because I started to notice that I couldn't do everything that the other kids could do. I, like, I couldn't get on top of a swing and swing. I couldn't, um, like, climb, climb things as well as they could. I would move slower than they could. It's just everything that would be signs of knowing that you would be a little person. Do you remember where to blow into? We first put them in nursery school 
and the kids there, they actually, they don't really have an understanding yet at four or five years old. But we did approach him that he's going to be a little bit shorter than other people and a, you know, a little bit, you know, different. There might be questions and all that. But, you know, you answered them to the best you can. And when he went into kindergarten in grade one, there were a little bit more questions from some of the kids. But again, it was a smaller school and he addressed them the best. They accepted him. Being a small stature does come with some challenges, but we don't let that stop us from living our lives. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like a thimble on a monument. Connie has always had a passion for animals, and for 29 years, she has run her own business. I help out, of course, with the family business. So do Emily and Scott on occasion. I have a passion as well, but you'll discover that later. Parker. Chris and Stephanie Root live in Aurelia. The newlyweds married just this past year. Stephanie is originally from Kansas City, Missouri, and Chris from Feversham. They too met at a little people conference in the States. Unlike Stephanie, Chris does not have achondroplasia, common to most little people. I have a condition called hypochondroplasia. Not too much of difference, uh, longer limbs, uh, longer arms and longer legs, same body proportion. I'm 4'9", so I'm a little taller than the average little person, which is kind of fun to say. I'm a taller little person. Um, uh, some of the challenges in life um, with work, for example, um, nothing major really with work. When I first started at a job at Ideal Supply, I, I was a, a parts driver and I did pick and put away parts as well. So you would have thought I had a challenge with driving the vehicles, but I didn't. I could jump into the full-size Chevy truck and drive it no problem and have the contractors or mechanics scratching their head when I got out of the truck and they would wonder, well, how did Chris drive that truck? But I've had no issues driving. If I am putting stock away, uh, there's some higher shelves up there, so I'd either uh, get a ladder or when nobody's looking, I'll climb up that shelf and put that part away or pick that part, so. I remember preschool and we played superheroes and stuff. No, no one ever really acknowledged the fact that I was smaller. I, I did notice it though when I would be in gym class and stuff when we were supposed to do like the mile run and um, in gym when I got older they kind of cut the mile in half for me because one average sized person's step is two of mine so I'd run the full mile and it'd be like I was running two. The worst part about doing laundry is getting the socks that go at the very bottom. And but other than that, a step stool helps and we're good to go. With me being four foot tall, I do have a set of pedal extenders on my car and I have sit with a pillow behind my back to push me up so my knees can bend and have more control. But give me the pedal extenders in the pillow and I can drive just like anyone else. So we don't have anything for first period. I don't think we have anything. <laughs> Scott is a very independent, and I've always wanted him to be independent. When he went to high school, I said, you know, he, well, Emily was there at the time, and I said, just go in there, you know, t there's going to be looks and whatever and questions. Just do what you need, but find your friends. Just go here. I try to tackle anything that I can. It's just things that I know I can't do. I pause and I say, I can't do that. If I try to do that, I might get hurt. I might break something. So I am cautious with that, but anything that I think I can do, I'll just take the initiative and do it. Because it's thin and you yeah. can put it right there, hold that one there, and then it's long enough you can yeah. push it through. Scott was involved in building a garden shed with a group which he, uh, as far as contributing, he contributed and ex was expected to contribute just like any other student. Uh, very little accommodations uh, were made to allow him to meet those requirements. We do have some accommodations as far as some stools that raises his level so he can use the machine safely, but he's expected yes. and has the ability to operate machines and does very well.
You're a student council, you should be. Yeah, but that's... I was kind of nervous to talk to him because I never actually met a, a little person like him before. But then afterwards, I, I kind of see he's like everyone else. You are a woman, right? All right. <laughs> I was telling you earlier, I have a passion. My passion is music. Okay, and have a good evening at work. Thanks. Yeah, stop by if you can. The job isn't that hard. The hardest part of the job would be the lifting of the equipment, setting it up, lugging it and slugging it, as I say. But usually, most places I go, there are always somebody around to help carry things in, put speakers up for me. What I enjoy is watching the people the way they enjoy music. Tonight, you'll be listening to the sounds of Kevin's Music Factory. If you have a song you'd like me to play, come on up and I'll try to get it on for you through the course of the evening. Purple tomatoes and purple potatoes and yeah! I've always been really great working with children and teaching them new things and so from a very young age I knew that I wanted to work with children and I know that a lot of jobs aren't limited due to dwarfism when working with children. What could it be? Snap! I know there are some jobs that I definitely could not do. I could never be a police officer chasing criminals down the road. Like, I would not have the speed or... I'm well aware of that. All of the jobs that I considered when I was younger, none of them were... would be limited by my dwarfism. She is a great employee, and we plan to uh, extend her contract with us here at Westridge. Hey, Marilyn. Hello. Hi, Marilyn. Hello. Marilyn Gilpin is from Angus. Not only is she our bookkeeper, she is a good friend. She has a condition called osteoimperfecta, which means that she has a brittle bone disorder. When I was uh, three years old, I'd spent 18 months in Barry Hospital <laughs> with broken bones. Most of the time, I was in what they call a gallows splint traction, where you just your head and shoulders on the bed in your body and your legs up in the air. Wait a coffee. Yes, I'd love one, Marilyn. When I first started working here, I worked for another gentleman and he was six foot tall. So, uh, the first year we worked together, it was a challenge because things were set up for him. So it was a little bit more challenging to work with him than after I took over. And uh, he was very shocked when I came in because they didn't tell him I was little when I came for the interview. Thank you very much. My filing cabinets are only three drawers high instead of four. Everything else is kept down to my level. I don't have to climb a whole lot. If you have a goal and you want to do it, just set out, do it as the best you can. Hey. Hi. How was your day today? Fine. Good. So who are we playing today? Um, Collingwood. Collingwood. I'm really good with simple math. I'm really good in the math compared to English. So I've decided let's try to start out with a career choice for being an accountant. So just come back, do a co-op like my sister did, and see if I want to be an accountant, see if that's the field that I want to go into, see if it's stressful. Then later on, after my accountant phase Sorry, completes and stuff like that, I'd rather, I'd either go, like to go into a form of construction, building small things, or go into a field of computer. You would have noticed that Scott is throwing with a stick. As a result, uh, the original delivery didn't work for him. So um, plenty of people use the stick when they're curling if they have knee or hip issues. But it's been great because it's allowed uh, a real diversification in the sport, allowing people who wouldn't normally get to curl and allow them to give them the opportunity to curl because of the stick. Uh, we'll do better next time. Yeah. 
try this place out. We have known the McManaman family for many years now. We consider them good friends. Hi. Hi. Could I get a small hot chocolate, please? We first met the McManamans at a Little People of Ontario coffee? Provincial Regular Conference. Coffee? Their 15-year-old daughter, Sarah, was adopted by Cecilia and Doug at the age of three months after being foster parents for several years. I think adopting Sarah, knowing that she is a little person, was a courageous and unselfish thing for Cecilia and Doug to do. I was a little bit worried about what dwarfism entailed, what, because uh, I couldn't even remember really seeing anybody with achondroplasia or with dwarfism. And we went to, to meet her and there was this smiling three-month-old baby girl and um, we just, from that moment on, it was just a blessing for us. If I had the chance to be taller, I don't, I don't think I would, I would want that or choose to do that because it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, it's the person who you are inside. So if I was five feet tall, I don't think my friends would look at me differently. They would, they still, they like and know who I am and they're friends with me and my family loves me for who I am and if I was five feet tall, I don't think they would see me any different. I think some of the challenges that she might face are maybe the expectations of other people. And I remember when Sarah was a younger child, people saying, oh, does she have to go to a special school? Is she cognitively challenged? Or, you know, that, that type of thinking, that thinking that because she's small, that she's not capable of anything that a, an average person would be able to do. And how old are you, Grace? You're 10? Sarah's 15. She's in grade 10. <laughs> oh, very nice. People, like, tend to treat you in more of a special way. Uh, like, the time, I remember when I was little, I went to a clothing store and they had a, a draw and you had to scratch and win something. And the lady let me scratch every single one till I won the prize. <laughs> and I felt special and you could tell that she was really, she liked me and she wanted me to feel treated like everyone else. If parents are expecting a, a little person to have a little person, I would say don't worry about it. I, I think it's a, a gift. It's, yes, there are challenges. When Sarah was a, a baby, I was in a parent group with other parents of children with disabilities and there were children who couldn't feed themselves, who had severe disabilities, and for Sarah, all it is is being little, and I, she's healthy, she's happy, and she's a beautiful girl. Four, five, six, bank auction. When I see people talking about little people, um, it hurts at first because they just don't understand, you know, they don't understand my life, they don't understand exactly what it means to be a little person. Even though myself I'm not a little person, I know what it's like from their aspect too because I mean I do everything with them, right? So when they talk about little people sometimes they make fun of them, sometimes they you know, they just don't understand, they use improper terminology. But when they get to know my family, they ask me questions and I clarify them to the people and they really, they, their eyes open up and then they see that, you know, they're just like us. So. We are families! <laughs> we are family. Malie. To me, they weren't normal. To me, it wasn't normal to look like that, so I was kind of nervous or unsure. Now they're great. We're like best friends pretty well. They're pretty much a second family to me. When I go out into like the public, there's always times that I feel that when I'm around people that don't know who I am and that don't know that there's a little person in the area, they start to point and they start saying like, oh, there's a little person there, or oh, there's a midget there. Oh, are we gonna be cheesy now? The M word, otherwise known as midget, is a term that bothers, and I'm well aware, a lot of other little people. I'm one to believe that 
it's ignorance. People don't know the true meaning of the word midget. Um, I'm not a midget, so it's not a correct term to refer to me as that. A midget is someone of smaller height that is completely in proportionate size, whereas I am a smaller stature, I'm four foot tall, but my torso is average, where my limbs are smaller. So when people throw the term at, towards me or towards one of my friends who also has dwarfism, it's not a correct term. And you can either let it get under your skin or you can just kind of brush it off and try to explain to them the difference and how that's a derogatory term that's not appropriate. Excuse me. Can you reach the artificial vanilla, please? Me and Steph don't mind. Yep, yeah, perfect. Like the attention. Thank you so much. But if you take friends of ours out, that's where the action happens, more or less. We'll be walking, we'll hear something, and we don't, like, it's whatever, like, right? Yeah, we, it's us, yes, right? But if, say, my vanilla. buddy Andrew or my friend, anybody, any of my friends, especially when they first get to know us and they're out with us, they can't Stand people saying so. I don't feel like we, we and we gotta remind them like just, just calm down. We 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 can handle this. It doesn't bother us. But you didn't you didn't hear what they said. You, they said this that. And I'm like that's fine, man. And I'm happy that you're mad at them for doing that. But don't go cause a scene because it doesn't hurt us any. No one's never called me a midget. It could be it hurtful. Like it's not the proper word to call someone that's short stature, it's a little person, they probably don't even know what it could mean. They just hear it and then use it and aren't 100% sure what they're calling you. Ooh, nice. When I hear the word midget, it's, it's mostly like my heart has sunk because that person hasn't got knowledge of what to call people of my stature, short stature, like dwarf. Um, little person, short stature. Health issues, I think, for anyone are always kind of in the back of your mind. You think about them, you try to be healthy. Um, I was, I'm very blessed with even being an achondroplasia dwarf. I haven't had any health issues. I had one leg surgery, um, but I haven't had the typical back surgeries. And the, I only had straightening on one leg, not two. And it's all about taking care of yourself. Yes, it's in the back of my mind about possible health issues, but I don't dwell on it. I just try to take care of myself the best that I can. Myself, I have numbness in my feet. Now, that's a lot to do with weight too, with any, every size, or with any little person. Um, we really have to watch our weight, especially after 40. That'll start affecting our legs, movement. Some little people go for surgery and the results aren't always good. And that's why I haven't really gone for any surgery for my back because I can still get around. I'm still comfortable. I don't have really back pain. It's just numbness that it's a little bit harder to walk. I don't see her short stature really holding her back. I think um, in a lot of ways it makes her more determined and more confident. Uh, it just makes her stand out, I think, as well. Hi there. Hello. Hi. We have a pair of pants that we need to get hemmed, just oh. uh, altered for okay. her. Yes, this world isn't made for short stature people. It's made for average size people. So we do have the difficulties, but we just overcome them and do the things that we can to improve it and just live our lives like little people and feel confident about ourselves. You got a, you got a ticket? It's made me more aware of respecting and understanding other people's differences, whether they be blind or um, hearing impaired or a child that has special needs. It, it makes one more aware and understanding and kind of take the time to ask them questions. I will go and ask questions because I want people to do the same. Hey Alan, how you doing? Great, great, great Greg. Thanks. Welcome to our house. Glad to be here. Uh, Alan Redford is a little person. He, at the current moment, is the Vice President of Little People of Ontario, also is President of Little People of Canada. Many of the new members right now are, are, are families 
that are expecting um, uh, a child uh, that would be a little person. Um, you know, and parents and are always concerned. They don't know what it necessarily it's going to be like unless they've had a little person before or unless they've known somebody. So, um, yeah, that's a, that's a large part of, of the organization. We went out to one of the first functions that they they had after we joined and we met all the families, we got a lot of information through LPO and they've been a continued support as Sarah has grown up. With my case it's a little bit different since I have a whole family of little people where there's some people that it's just you know one person so um, it's great it's a great place where people can come together and get knowledge and everything. You meet new friends and it's kind of nice to be in the same room with a lot of people that are the same height as you and you can ex exchange different stories and talk and you have a real friendship between the kids that you meet along the way and new ones that come in and there is quite a lot of people that are a member of the organization so it's very nice. I almost take my height and stature as an advantage on a lot of things. Um, yeah, you are noticed, you are remembered for who you are. Um, and then there's been opportunities where I've done like things like basketball. I've, I've toured Canada and, and taught kids a program on teasing and bullying and acceptance. And I traveled Canada doing that. If I was average height, I wouldn't have had that opportunity to do that. I've done some, uh, some movie stuff, some TV stuff. and. If I was average height, I would have been in the same pool as every every thousandth average size Joe auditioning for that part. To where, if they need a little person, they're pretty limited to who they get. So I've had the opportunity. So I can't I can't say that there's no nothing that I wouldn't take take away from being small. She looks out. She goes, "I've walked in snow deeper than this," <laughs> you know, like. <laughs> I find it's been awesome being a little person and I stand out in a crowd and you'll forget her name, his name, her name, her name, her name, his name, but you're not going to forget my name because I stand out. I have a hard time remembering your name because you're average size and I know a million average size people, but you won't forget who I am. How's the deaconship? I can do everything that you can. I can play sports. I can be involved in school, I can be involved in student council, I can be involved in mostly anything I want. It's just in a different way or in a different manner. I have so many friends and so many love, like people that I love and I have fun with and I think if I was tall I wouldn't meet half of those people. Was, Your mom was, was saying though, the My parents inspire me. I mean like what they have accomplished throughout their life is a big inspiration to me. I mean I hope to be like them when I when I raise my family and like my mom made a business from the ground up and I hope someday I can like be as successful as she has been. When I go out with Sarah it's I'm just going out with my daughter and uh, she's just like any other 15 year old girl she wants all the clothes and the brand name things and uh, she's She's just a, a treat to be around. <laughs> you know, all in all, like if I wasn't a little person, um, I never would have met my wife. And she's, uh, she's made my life. Little people are people, and they live everyday lives of their own, um, just like you.